Hi everybody, well, welcome back. Um, it's Leonie's uh, wonderful healthy cooking again today, showing you lots of different ways to eat really good and nourishing food. Uh, I know there's been lots of love on Super Troopers for the um, red pepper and cauliflower soup. Apparently this is something that uh, this uh, Super Trooper now cooks most days and she and her husband find it absolutely delicious. So uh, that's brilliant. You can find that on um, one of the earlier videos that I've done with uh, with Lainey. I think it was the first one actually the first um, one. and there's also a nice post showing photographs of the chocolate muffins and the um the, the crackers you know the seed crackers and uh, saying that the crackers are so filling she can only eat one at a time so uh, you know that's how good they are so that's all really encouraging for for all of us really and especially for Lainey and uh, today we've got the delight of some stuffed butternut butternut squash and some spicy biscuits. So I'll hand over to Leonie who will start showing us how to produce those two wonderful sounding things. Over to you Leonie. Thank you very much Tricia and welcome back in the eDrive kitchen. Uh, fantastic to hear. I haven't seen all the posts on Facebook but I will, I've seen them on YouTube so I will comment on some of them and it's fantastic that the ladies are sharing their recipes with you. Okay, so today we're going to start off with making a spicy biscuits. Uh, often, I don't know, do you eat biscuits at all, Tricia? Um, the odd occasion on at four o'clock when I have a cup of tea, and I tell you what I buy, I buy gluten-free Nan chocolate chip cookies, and right. they are delicious. Um, so they're, they're oat biscuits, they're very crisp, and um, I, I, buy, I now buy the gluten-free ones and I find them just literally delicious. And they're about 20 or 30 calories each. So they're not full of sugar, they're not full of uh, fat and they are crisp and lovely. So if I eat a biscuit, that's what I will eat, but I don't generally have biscuits in the house. Okay, well, you've already made a good choice by having the gluten-free, it's better for your gut. And I know that because you are gluten-free, you are feeling better because of that. Um, a lot of people who buy biscuits buy the packets, uh, the normal biscuits, and they're full of, uh, as you mentioned, uh, sugar, uh, fats, often a uh, vegetable fat, which is full of omega-6, which can be causing anti-inflammation. So it's something you don't really want to do. So today I want to show you a recipe that um, is really easy to make, very simple. Uh, there are a few ingredients that your viewers will maybe not be familiar with, but they are readily available in the shops. I've checked all that out or they can be bought from my website. Um, but the, uh, these, uh, res the recipe that I'm making today is gluten free. It's uh, sugar free and the fat that I'm using is a good fat. So this is a healthy biscuit if something like a healthy biscuit exists. And it's a base recipe. So um, you can add uh, spices or herbs or anything you want and make it your own if, if you like something like ginger biscuits. But let me show you um, how I'm going to do and how simple it is because you don't even need eggs either, which is quite unusual. So I'm going to turn the uh, webcam down. Right, so in here, um, this makes around uh, 40 small biscuits or about 20 normal size biscuits. So in this bowl, I've put uh, something called buckwheat flour. Um, it's uh, one of the really good original flours, not too much processed, and I chose a, a gluten-free version. It is available in the supermarkets, but if you can't find it and you have a kitchen uh, food processor, you can also use gluten-free oats and really grind them very finely. So that's an alternative. This is about 150 gram, but don't worry, the recipe will be, be below the, the video. So to that, I'm going to add something called almond flour. Almond flour is basically very finely ground almonds. Again, it's readily available in supermarkets, but also in health food stores. So that goes in next. Uh, I'm going to use two different spices. The one I'm using here is uh, cinnamon. Uh, that's about two, tea tables, two teaspoons. And also I'm going to use mixed spices. If you like ginger, by all means, add a ginger or change it into something else that you like. Um, 
I'm going to use uh, almond milk. So this is unsweetened almond milk, organic. You can use soya milk. And by all means, if you're dairy tolerant and you don't want to use a plant-based milk, do use normal milk, but this is about six tablespoons. So I'm going to put that in here. Um, and then I've used something which um, I love. I know that you go a lot to France, Tricia, and I love the French uh, hazelnut oil, and that's readily available in France. And it was a little bit here as well in a farm shop, but unfortunately they've taken it out of the range. So this time I've used walnut oil, uh, which is again readily available in the supermarket. Just pour it in here. And uh, to make the biscuit a little bit sweet, um, I have used something called stevia, which might not be known uh, to your uh, viewers. Do you know about stevia, Tricia? Um, I know about it from you, actually, Lainey, because you mentioned right. it to me, um, some time ago. So, yeah. yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, well, I use this as an alternative to sugar. Stevia is natural, it comes from a plant. It's uh, the liquid out of the leaves of the stevia plant. And it's very highly concentrated. It's 300 times stronger than sugar in taste. Now, uh, viewers who will have tried it, who will have found that it sometimes has a, it has a different taste to sugar and sometimes an aftertaste. But that's only if you don't buy the real stevia. This is pure liquid stevia. And um, it's no calories, uh, no carbohydrates. And the most important thing of this product is that it doesn't affect your blood sugar levels. Because if they go up and you don't burn off the energy, of course, uh, sugar will be stored as fat. So for this, I'm going to use uh, half a teaspoon. So that's how little you need. It's, it comes in liquid form. It comes in powder form as well. But then it's very, very expensive. Um, they do sell stevia in supermarkets. And I'm just going to mix this with a fork before I... <laughs> they do sell stevia in supermarkets, but then often they add um, uh, artificial sweetness to it. So it's not the real thing. And that's often the stevia that's got an aftertaste. So you just mix this up into a dough. Um, if you think it's too uh, liquid, then just add a bit more flour. If you think it is... Um, too tough, then just add a bit more uh, milk, right? So there we have it. This is the dough and I'm going to now put my hands in. <laughs> nope. There we go. So look, it makes a lovely, lovely dough. Just going to move this out of the side to make space for my um, baking tray. So here's the baking tray. And we just mix this all up. Make sure that uh, the herbs and spices are well through it. And you just take a little bit, I would say something like that, and then you roll it into a ball and then you press it flat with your hands, just like that. And there you have one biscuit. So it is as simple as that with all healthy ingredients no sugar and then just you see there you have your little biscuits it's very simple yeah. um what i like about these biscuits i'm a bit of a practical person maybe that's because i'm dutch is that you don't get your whole um surface full of flour which i don't like <laughs> it always makes such a mess do you ever make biscuits yourself uh tricia no, I can honestly say, Lenny, I don't think I have ever once in my life made a biscuit. Lisa, would you be tempted to making these biscuits? Um, if I'm absolutely completely honest, I probably wouldn't. Um, as you know, I'm quite resistant to cooking anyway. And the thing for me is that um, I really don't eat enough biscuits to think, oh, I, you know, I'd really like to have those in the, in the cupboard. I, I'm, I mean, I, I'm sure they're absolutely delicious, but I do have to be honest with you. Um, so, but, but I can understand, you know, I'm, I mean, those people who like to have um, a snack and, uh, you know, have something like that with a, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee in the morning um, and, and just love to have a biscuit in the, in the cupboard and, and perhaps for, for when their grandchildren come around. Um, 
Frozen really in. good recipe actually to make with grandchildren, I think, uh, because it's fun. It's a bit like playing with uh, Play-Doh. <laughs> yes. I used to love playing with Play-Doh and instead of some making, so now you can make something which looks like Play-Doh. Look, you make it into a little bell, press it. Uh, you can actually eat it. Um, so I'm, I won't show you all of them because that will take too long. This, as I said, this makes about 40 biscuits. Um, if you're um, conscious about your health, uh, make sure that you don't eat more than two or three at a time. So, so this will make about uh, 40 biscuits. Uh, this will go in the oven on 175 degrees for about uh, 20 minutes. So I'm just putting them away now for the moment. Um, and I'm just going to show you what they will turn out like. So this is what they will look like. They look so delicious. that are the lovely biscuits. Yeah, lovely. I would really love to taste one of those. Um, it's such a shame that I can't. <laughs> I was actually thinking just now, Tricia, maybe I could send you some in the post in a bag. <laughs> That would be fun. <laughs> a food parcel for a desperate woman in Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, who likes biscuits. <laughs> right, anyhow. So that was how simple and easy the spicy biscuits are. And as I said, you can put nuts in it. Um, you can put lemon, lemon rind in it if you want to have a lemon taste. So this basically is a basic recipe to be, for you to be creative with, if that's what you want to do. So um, the next one uh, I'm going to show you is a butternut, a stuffed butternut squash. Now, um, in Holland, where I come from, they call this a uh, bottled pumpkin. I hear they're a butternut squash. So when some people talk to me about butternut squash, I was like, oh, what is that? And in uh, Australia, actually, they call this a butternut pumpkin. So the names of the pumpkin are very, very different all over the world. And the pumpkin belongs to the cor corbids vegetables. It's like a normal pumpkin. Uh, very good for you, very nutritious, especially in winter. Now, I know, Tricia, you, make, you love making pumpkin soup, don't you? So when you make that, can I ask you how you cut it? How you cut it in bits or how um, you prepare I, it? I buy it ready chopped up from Marks and Spencers. <laughs> Trisha. <laughs> I know. Uh, the thing is that, you know, you have to understand how little equipment I have in my kitchen. I don't, I, I only have about three knives and most of them are quite small. There's no way I've got a knife that would cut through the tough outer thing of that. And honestly, Lainey, um, I, my excuse is that I'm very busy. So I'm going to say that buying the bags of, um, sliced or diced um, butternut squash um, just saves me so much time so but I can you, understand you know us how to do it properly and then um, who knows one day when I have lots and lots of time and leisure and I am really into cooking I shall follow your instructions okay. I'm trying my very best to get you into cooking <laughs> anyhow uh, the butternut squash, as you said, is very difficult to cut and it is one of the reasons I never ate it for up about 10 years ago, because I found with cutting with a knife, even a strong knife, so difficult, but I found a solution, which is just to turn your oven on, on 140 degrees Celsius and put the whole butternut squash on the tray in the oven for about half an hour. And after half an hour, it becomes soft and you can cut it, it is as soft as butter. So that's what I've done with this uh, bottle nut squash, uh, butternut squash, um, and easily then cut it in half. Um, I've cut it in half and then put it in the oven for another 40 minutes. And then it turns out like this. So you have half a butternut squash. This recipe, by the way, is for two people. I put a bit of pepper on it and because of the purposes of the video, I don't want to have people to hang on. So that's the half butternut squash. Um, then I'm going to use for this recipe, something which is called uh, quinoa. Have you heard of quinoa? Yes, I absolutely have. In fact, have. Um, uh, I, I entered it as a, a word in Scrabble yesterday. Oh, <laughs> it's a difficult one to spell. I still have to think about how to spell it. But uh, did you it's, manage to get it right? <laughs> it scored really well, yes, with the Q-U-I-N-O-A. Yes, I was very yeah. proud of myself. Mm. Well done. And do you eat it? What, quinoa? Um, yeah. I, I have eaten it, yeah. 
you have okay it's a really good replacement for rice and pasta if if or in couscous as well uh, rice and pasta are high in starch uh, quinoa is a grain and is full of protein so it's little bit better for you than rice and pasta because it doesn't raise your blood sugar level as much as rice and pasta do because of the starches. Uh, it's very nutritious. It's a very, very healthy uh, vegetable. And it also is very high in fiber. So again, it's very good for your gut. It's of course gluten-free and has got a low glycemic index. So eating quinoa is uh, well quite a good thing to do. It comes in little grains uh, like this. So you need to cook it. Uh, I cook mine for about 20 minutes. You need about 40 grams. And what it turns out, it turns out to be like this. So just uh, a, a mix. In this recipe, I'm also using a feta cheese that I've crumbled up. Pecan nuts, but you can use other nuts if you don't like. Uh, I wouldn't use peanuts, but you can use almonds. You can use hazelnuts, uh, walnuts. And then I have uh, cranberries. They are frozen cranberries. Um, a lot of people, when they eat cranberries, and when I was looking for cranberries in, uh, in the supermarket, they're often dried. And dried cranberries are full of sugar. Uh, but I found these uh, fresh ones that I'm going to use in this recipe. And then finally, I'm going to use a little bit of parsley as well. So now, I'm going to turn, sorry. Lenny, just one. before you go on, um, did you tell us how you uh, cooked your quinoa? Yes, well, it's best is to follow the instructions on the packet, but uh, basically you need for this recipe uh, 40 grams and you just cook it with water, uh, about 120 milliliters of water for about 20 uh, minutes until all the water is absorbed. You have to be a little bit careful and keep an eye on it. Otherwise it sticks to the bottom and it starts to burn. But the best thing is to follow the instructions because some quinoas are different from other ones. Okay, I, I just want to check because um, it, it's a bit like cooking rice or something. It's not yes. like, you know, with um, some grains, is it polenta where you just add water? So so it's not like, like that where you That's just- That's risotto. That's risotto, I think you mean. Uh, no, I, it isn't polenta as a grain. You just literally yeah. add boiling water and leave it. And it's then in the consistency you want. I just want to check that you hadn't just added boiling water that you'd actually have no. to cook it. No. That's fine, that's fine. No, you just put the quinoa in the pan, you add the correct amount of water and then you let it cook. My recipe was 20 minutes, but as I said, make sure it doesn't burn because it does that very quickly. I've gone wrong a couple of times with that. So um, I've got that here and I'm just going to turn you around to show you how I'm going to make the stuffed butternut squash. Right, so we have the butternut squash here. Um, I will start with uh, cutting up the um, nuts and then after that, the um, cranberries. I use a, a big knife for it with a, an edge like that and I find that much easier because the nuts don't go all over the place, <laughs> she says very confidently. <laughs> there we are. Um, so the nuts that I recommend um, that I think are best for you, in my opinion, are walnuts, pecan nuts, almonds, Brazil nuts and hazelnuts. Yeah. Uh, because Cashew nuts, for example, which is loved by many people, has a high glycemic index, which means that it will raise your blood sugar level faster than any other nut. And what I found interesting with, with these nuts, they have sort of the form of a brain. Yes. If you look closely. So nuts are very good for your brain, by the way. That's why I think they're in that shape. Anyhow, I'm adding this to the, um, to the quinoa, just to make a mix. Next uh, is going to cut the uh, cranberries. One nearly disappeared. <laughs> um, and they keep rolling because they're balls, of course. <laughs> so did you buy them fresh and then freeze them or did you buy them frozen? No, I bought them uh, frozen. Mm -hmm. Um, they are, I, I was, I always thought, oh, they will only be there when it's Christmas, but that's not the case. So this goes into my bowl as well. Go 
goes away. Gives a little wipe. So there we are. Then uh, to that, I'm going to add the feta cheese. And just mix it up. I don't don't tend to put uh, salt and pepper on this mix because um, the uh, the butternut squash already has got pepper in it, and I find the salt of the feta cheese just gives it a, a nice taste. Okay, so I've mixed this all up very nicely, and then the final ingredients is uh, parsley. Now I would love your viewers to let me know how they can keep their parsley nice and fresh in the fridge. I have never found a way. So I don't know, would you know, Tricia, how you can keep it not looking so sad? Um, no, Lenny, I'm, oh. I'm very sorry. Absolutely not a clue. Uh, no. But let's ask the let's ask the people watching because uh, you, you never know they might have a good idea. That's flat leaf parsley, isn't it? It's flat leaf parsley. I find it uh, tastier than curly parsley. Yeah. Do you use curly parsley? Uh, no, Lenny, I don't. No, no. no. Okay, I find this just has more taste. So in goes the parsley. And again, I'm going to mix this up. This could easily be a salad on its own if you if you want to with some oil to if you add some oil to it. So it's quite versatile. And then finally, I'm going to cut some of the butternut squash out of here and mix that through there as well. So it's all nice and soft. So I just cut a little bit of a, a square. So just to clarify, the total time you cooked that butternut squash was the, the original, did you say 40 minutes to soften the skin so that you can cut through? Uh, and the, no, first of all, you put it in for 30 minutes. 30, and then you 30. do it for 40. For 40, yeah. It's okay. basically, yeah, what I do is I tend to put it in when I'm cooking something else in the oven okay. so that the temperature is on anyhow. Then it's no extra energy. I'm trying to watch energy as well. Um, so I'm going to mix this through. The butternut squash. And this, this is so lovely. It's so fresh as well because of the cranberries. Yeah. And very, very good fiber, of course. So I'm going to put this in there and just fill it up. And it's a very colorful dish. Okay, so there you have your uh, stuffed butternut squash. Wow, that's amazing. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? And it's full of fiber, full of good nutrients and really, really good for you. So it's that simple. The time really is cooking the butternut squash. Yeah, sure. And yeah. You, you, that would serve two people, is that yeah, right? That's and, correct. And that would be the whole the whole dish you know that's that's what you would have you would yes that's what i would share with my husband uh, because it's got protein in there because of the quinoa the cheese the nuts there's good fats in there which is again the nuts and then of course the fiber in the pumpkin so you get all the range of uh, carbohydrates protein fats fiber vitamins everything in there it's a really really healthy dish Sounds fantastic, really lovely, and uh, yeah, looks delicious too. Uh, so so nice. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think both the spice biscuits and the stuffed butternut squash looks lovely. Uh, tell us what you're going to um, show us next week. Well, next week I was thinking because it's the month of February, it's the month of love. Why not make a chocolate mousse? <laughs> so that's one of them. And I find that a lot of my clients say when I say, "Oh, you need to eat vegetables," oh, they're boring. So I'm going to show you a really nice vegetable dish. 
Wonderful, that sounds fantastic. I'm just going to remind everybody of your book again. Um, so this is available from Lenny herself uh, via her website. And, um, you know, she literally puts these in envelopes, writes the, writes the name on the envelope and sends them to you. It's a very personal process. It's nothing like ordering on Amazon, uh, but you get a copy of her, her book, which has got all the recipes in that we're talking about during these videos. So well worth a uh, well worth buying and it's you know it's very easy to follow all the uh, all the recipes if i show you a typical page uh, everything very clearly laid out a nice photograph so that you know what the end result should be and uh, everything extremely easy to follow um, we've got a special delight for you next week on the 16th because um, as Leonie says she'll be doing the, uh, the the two dishes that she has is proposing the chocolate mousse and um, how to make vegetables more exciting but in the afternoon um, for one of our Trisha talks at four o'clock we'll have a live zoom session with Leonie and I know that a lot of you will love that because you can really ask her all your questions now Leonie has a very interesting story to tell about her own um, you know her own health and the ways that, that she used um, a, an improved diet to make a huge difference to how she was feeling and that's led on to a whole new life for her uh, working with uh, women who come to her with weight issues with health issues with various other things that they need to sort out and Leonie will help them so she will literally guide them through a process uh, to um, to an end point where they are slimmer fitter, healthier, and generally feeling an awful lot better. So she's got a lot to say on that subject and a lot of knowledge and information to share with us. If you'd like to ask her a question, there's a couple of ways that you can do that beforehand, although you can also do it during the uh, programme. Um, but one is to leave a, um, a question underneath the video, um, or you can leave it on, to, on Super Troopers, or you can pop it into marketing at lookfabulousforever.com. But either way, just leave any questions that you have for Lenny. We will find them. Um, and failing that, just ask her the question on the day. So that's next Tuesday at four o'clock in a live, live Zoom call with Lenny. And uh, I'm looking forward to that a lot. And I know you will, uh, you will will all be as well. So Lenny, um, I just need to say thank you. Um, that was absolutely brilliant as always. And we will very much look forward to seeing you next Tuesday for a double dose. <laughs> It'll be a whole day of fab look fabulous forever. Well, it can't get any better than that, can it? Thank you. Absolutely not. Uh, thank you very much, Lenny, and uh, see you next week. Okay, bye-bye. See bye -bye. you next week. Take care. Bye, Tricia.